And joining us tonight to discuss the current relationship and the future relationship between the U.S. and Saudi Arabia in the aftermath of the release of the Khashoggi report is Stephen A. Cook. Mr. Cook is an expert on U.S. Middle East policy and the author of False Dawn, Protest, Democracy and Violence in the New Middle East. Mr. Cook, thank Mr. Cook thanks for joining us. It's a pleasure to be with you. All right, so the White House readout of President Biden's conversation with King Abdullah conspicuously did not mention Jamal Khashoggi's name. And although the Biden administration did sanction high-level Saudis, he did give MBS a pass, which was counter to what he campaigned on. And despite the confirmation from his own intelligence agency that the Crown Prince authorized the murder, what do you make of it? Well, it's um, very, very difficult for the United States to be sanctioning the leader of another country. It's true, he did speak to King Salman, who is, who is the king of Saudi Arabia, but for all intents and purposes, uh, Mohammed bin Salman, the crown prince, is the leader of the country. And we don't make a practice of sanctioning uh, leaders of other countries, in addition to the fact that the United States, the Biden administration, has a number of priorities in the Middle East in which it would like to elicit Saudi cooperation. Uh, I presume that they calculated that directly sanctioning the crown prince would have made those goals much more difficult to achieve. Uh, primary among those is negotiating a new nuclear agreement with the Iranians, which will have to get buy-in from the Saudis. And also the war in Yemen as well. Last week, on the same day that Mr. Biden met with the king, and uh, spoke with the king, rather, the U.S. bombed Saudi Arabia's Iranian-backed targets in Syria. Uh, President Biden's first military action. Was, was this a coincidence? Well, the administration was retaliating for rocket attacks that have been ongoing that Iranian proxies in Iraq have been conducting for quite a number of months. And in recent weeks, they targeted a base where American forces are located in Iraqi Kurdistan. So uh, it was coincidental uh, that it happened around the same time that uh, there was the conversation with King Salman and the uh, announcement and release of the DNI's report. Uh, but this is something that uh, the United States was going to routinely respond to uh, if uh, Iranian-backed militias continue to target Americans and their allies in and around the region. So we heard President Biden uh, just a minute ago. He said there will be announcement regarding Saudi Arabia tomorrow. Any guesses what that will be? Well, a number of weeks ago, the uh, Biden administration put under review weapons sales to the Saudis. Um, that's generally a routine thing when a new administration comes into power. They review everything the previous administration did. They put weapons sales on hold. Generally, those weapons sales are then released. Um, it's possible uh, that they will continue to maintain a hold on those weapons and in fact cancel those contracts. And can you explain a little bit why, just give a little bit of background concerning the war in Yemen and the Saudi weapons and how they would be used? Uh, well, the, the Saudis intervened in Yemen's civil war in 2015, and they have been using American weaponry, um, uh, and, and they don't use them very well, and it has contributed to a humanitarian disaster in, in Yemen, um, something that if the rest of the Middle East was not in uh, political turmoil, we would be hearing a lot more about. Um, they have been responsible for killing large numbers of civilians uh, and tremendous suffering uh, in Yemen. Uh, the Saudis see this as an important security issue for them and a way in which to uh, strike uh, at Ar Iranian-backed uh, militias in uh, Yemen, namely the Houthis, who they have been fighting. But it has overall been an absolute disaster. And uh, whereas the Trump administration gave full support for the Saudis in uh, the Yemen intervention, uh, President Biden uh, has determined that the best way to get the Saudis out of Yemen is to not indulge uh, this uh, ill-fated intervention. So barring sanctions on MBS personally, Mohammed bin Salman, the crown prince, who is the de facto leader of Saudi Arabia after the king, do you think that there will be other consequences for him personally when he becomes the next king, like international isolation? Well, he certainly is uh, in trouble with uh, Saudi Arabia's most important uh, partner, the United States. I suspect that if King Salman passes from the scene relatively soon, it will be a, a difficult moment for uh, uh, Mohammed bin Salman should he become the king. Uh, of course, the United States has a long history of accommodating itself to leadership changes and government changes in countries, especially friendly ones that it needs. Um, but um, I, certainly the release of the DNI's report, which uh, is explicit 
that uh, the crown prince was directly involved in this gruesome murder of Jamal Khashoggi uh, makes it uh, at least difficult in the short run for Mohammed bin Salman uh, internationally. I suspect, however, that in time, uh, international business community, uh, governments like the United States, other Western governments will find that uh, it's necessary uh, to move on and will find a way to work with the crown prince. But that's, I think, uh, somewhat down the road. I think for now, to use a, a hockey metaphor, Mohammed bin Salman is in the penalty box. All right, Stephen Cook, thank you very much for joining us tonight. My pleasure.